Welcome back. Thanks for joining me again on Misery Point Radio. Good to be back. Good to have you here. And you know what? Really, really fucking good to be able to finally share this episode with you. Because it has been a really long time in the making. You see, about a year ago... Today's guests and I had talked about getting together, and for whatever reason, crazy schedules, crazy lives, we just couldn't make it happen. But that's okay, because you know what? Over the course of this last year, so many awesome things have happened to this band. I mean, a new album, a super badass video shoot. Write-ups in magazines, coverage on local radio stations, local talk shows, cool shows that they've got to play, and just so many other things that we didn't even really get to scratch the surface on. So, it just actually worked out that we waited till the right time to make this happen, and now was indeed the right time. So... After a year of waiting, I'm ready to kick this off and share with you guys one more epic local band from Washington State. Proud to call these guys my friends and really excited to get you guys to hear their new material. So let's kick this off, let's get this going, and let's have an awesome time. What do you say? All right, so please welcome to Misery Point Radio, Jake Fry, Jesse Avery, Peter Tijan, otherwise known as the Sky Giants. Guys, thank you so much for uh, having me into your super secret lair today. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So this has been uh, kind of a long time in the making. Jesse and I have been talking about this, I think, since you worked for us, practically. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. It's been yeah, at least a year or so. so. But you've had a lot of stuff kind of uh, kind of going on, and... Finally, the release of the Shifting of Phase World is here, the new album, and it seems to be uh, doing quite well, so I'm excited to talk about it with you today. So, uh, well, let's talk about Phase World real quick. Uh, when did you guys release it? It came out on January 15th. Oh, I think you got that, the date. That was the original That's pretty good. date. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I was trying to remember. Yeah. I was like, I think it was January. It so was we January got it. He's got the date. Yeah. Do you, do you have the minute? Like. No. <laughs> okay. Like five eighteen p.m. Yeah, sure. Good, Let's yeah. go with that. Five eighteen <laughs> on January fifteenth. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's uh, getting some pretty good buzz. I mean, you guys, uh, you got a shout out on Loud and Local, mm-hmm. which was awesome here was in awesome. Yeah. in yeah. Seattle on uh, KISW. Yeah. Uh, BJ and Migs. Yeah, we're actually going to be back there on the twenty fourth to do a Loud and Local with Kevin Deers. We're going to be interviewed there, so that'll be cool. That's awesome. Uh, at KISW. Yeah, we're going up there on in Seattle. To the studio, to, to the, the studio. station. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. So, so that'll be fun. Did they tell you guys they were going to do that, or did you just turn on the radio one day and there you were? I actually never heard us on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I woke up and uh, saw a notification that uh, we were featured. and Yeah, other people heard it. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got a message from my friend. It's I was myth- like, hey, I heard you guys on the radio. It's yeah. mythological. Kind of, it's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know if it really happened. I was like, what song did they play? <laughs> I, I never even actually heard what they played. But <laughs> we were featured for a week, and I never even got to hear it. So. I think they might have played Iota. I don't wake up as early as BJ and Migs. And now we get to be interviewed because we foolishly thought we were going to be because we were featured. Yeah. <laughs> and they were probably like, oh, God, they thought they were going to be interviewed. So we well, got to Okay, how's the 24th? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. It worked out. <laughs> That's awesome. So I... Um, have been listening to the album quite a bit, and then in doing my job in comparison, I was also listening to uh, your previous album, um, which, uh, let's see, what was the name of that one there? What Future. the Future Knows. Yeah, so that one was definitely a lot more raw, mm-hmm. I would say, and Phase World is a lot more, I don't want to say polished, there's a certain level of polish on both, but definitely is a different direction um mm-hmm. how would you describe your sound between the two albums and how they're different 
You know, that first album, I think, uh, we, you know, it's just Peter and I were really doing a lot of, Jesse wasn't really, he, you kind of joined like right at the end there. Yeah. Like this guy like came in and like joined the band and within three days had recorded the bass lines for it. Right? Okay. Yeah, the songs we, are already written, you know. They were already recorded. Yeah, they were recorded. And, and we were like, hey, in, yeah. and he came to practice and knew all the songs. And then he's like, okay, let's record these. And then we did. So whereas this album, you know, the three of us have really been kind of collaborative. But uh, that first album, I think we were trying to, we're still figuring out what direction we want to go in. You know, there's kind of a lot of different. Sure. That was kind of pulling a lot of different ways. I mean, there's some kind of psychedelic tunes. Uh, we started to kind of go heavier towards kind of as we were, we were starting to pump out this batch of songs. I think like, like um, uh, I'm trying to remember which song was really the, um, Time Zero. That one was the first one where it was like maybe kind of heading in the direction of where the shifting of phase world was going, like in terms of like kind of more progressive structures and a little bit heavier. Yeah, yeah, what the future knows. The songs were all a lot shorter. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and they were just really a lot more straightforward. Yeah, they were even shorter and even more straightforward originally. So they were uh, uh, half of them are based off demos I did. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to have Jake play on some songs and record something for fun myself, and then Jake wanted to do it, and it seemed like it'd be a fun live thing. So we we eventually got a bass player named John. And he was a good bass player, and we just really weren't doing a lot with the band, except for paying band rent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he just said one day, yeah, I'm out. Yeah. You know, so we couldn't blame him, really, because it was slow moving, and we just really didn't know what to do exactly. But well, we'd, like, uh, practice, like, right before a show, and that was it. It was, like, play a show once a month, and, like, oh, shit, we, we got to play a show this Saturday. Yeah, Let's oh, figure gosh, that set out. Practice. <laughs> yeah. But and so he left, and then we did one show as a duo, I think. Yeah, we did. One or two, yeah. And that was it, and then... Uh, and then I just kind of saw Jesse around and and said, "Dude, come aboard!" Because I played with him when he was how old were you? Fourteen? Oh, it was two thousand and three. <laughs> so I I played my first show in two thousand three, and our drummer Denver showed up, and uh, didn't show up for the show. Didn't show for the show. And back then we didn't have cell phones. It'd be like, "Hey, man, where the hell are you?" And right. So he just wasn't there. We got a phone call after the show saying, "Oh man, I was busy with whatever he was doing." And uh, so when we were there. Uh, you know, we were covering, we were playing thrash metal at the time, and we we're covering like a Metallica song. I think it was like Four Horsemen or something. And uh, you know, Peter was doing sound for that show at the time, and uh, he was like, "Hey, you guys want to be drummer?" He, heard, I guess, probably overheard what was going on, and uh, what are you guys playing? And oh, Metallica cover, and he knew what it was, so we we're just like, "Okay." He said, "Yeah, I'll step in and play with you guys," and so he did. And, I guess almost what fifteen plus years later, I'm asked to come play with them again. So that's yeah. kind of a cool. <laughs> that's you know, a, yeah. Didn't you guys forget about that? that totally, that we, it happened. Yeah, we just kept like mutual <laughs> friends for those years through like MySpace and Facebook, and then all of a sudden I and got my a journal. Like did oh, you yeah, guys... before <laughs> before MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> no, and then um, <clears throat> you know he called me to come down and play those songs on the album, and mm. I didn't want to waste their time, so I had him send me some. Uh, demos and I just learned them as best as I could and I came down there and we had a practice and I just played them and they were like hey, uh, okay like yeah. you know it's kind of how it happened and I was like let's it, and then I think that week Peter was like hey we're recording an album do you want to play on it so and then after that we got a show in Seattle at Slim's I think it was and they're like hey we got a show do you want to play at the show and then it just kind of happened so awesome and since yeah. he wasn't in middle school anymore he was he was <laughs> he could play in bars yeah I never did pass middle school <laughs> yeah you've graduated now <laughs> to the the big boy toys yeah so and then so you joined then, and everything went hunky dory. And, and when did you decide that it was time to start recording uh, another album? Well, we wrote songs, too many songs, right away. Yeah, In fact, we have three new ones right now. We have a problem, and we just <laughs> yeah. put the album out like a month and a half ago or something. Yeah, yeah, um, I know. We, we haven't even learned all the songs after that album. Like, there's a few that yeah. we haven't even. Learned We've already played. dropped two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're like, <laughs> let's play some new songs. There are songs on that album that probably will never be played live. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I mean... What, what, what's cool, though, is the three of us all write write songs, and so and sometimes we'll even, like, somebody will write half a song and then kick it over to another person and say, hey, finish the song. Um, so it's a pretty, I think, pretty even in terms of, um, you know, con contribution. So, so you're, I mean, you consider really yourselves collaborative songwriters then? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, like, one person will... A lot of times will come with a whole song. Right. And, it, you know, it's open to, like, feedback and, like, adjustment and stuff. But And then there are other times where it's, like... There's there's a few songs where all three of us have added pieces. Yeah, we definitely have Jake songs, Peter songs, and Jesse songs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. 
Well, I, you know, that's cool. It keeps everything kind of, uh, everybody feels their contributions are, are part of it. I, I, I feel like a lot of times when I've played in bands in the past, you have one or two people that, you know, it's all their stuff and you have people that want to contribute. And sometimes those that don't get to contribute as much feel slighted or yeah. they don't feel like they're you know, part of the experience. Like that before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> they're all Jake's bands. <laughs> so <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Talking about your sound a little bit, you know, just throwing a few out there at you. You guys get compared to a lot of bands. Voivod is the one that clearly gets thrown yeah. out the most. Do you hear yeah. much Voivod? I, I hear Voivod in the kind of experimental sound. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't get the Voivod thing off the vocals necessarily. No. No. Yeah. Um, yeah but in the sense of like, I, I think some of the back rhythm, some of the drum beats and, and some of the kind of overarching feel. Mm-hmm. It kind of has a, you know, Voivody, old school Pink Floydy with a little U2 thrown in there maybe, but it's it's hard to describe it. And I think Voivod gets put out there because they are another band that's just really hard to describe. Yeah, yeah. And, and so... Well, well the, the um, I'd say um, harmonically is where we're coming from with Voivod, mm-hmm. you know. Um, kind of the dissonant chords. Sometimes. Yeah, a lot of those, lot of those chord, angular chords. And yeah. we're not always... Uh, Jake's a good yeller. I'm I'm not, and I don't try to be a yeller. It's just not in me. But uh, so there's there's not a not a lot of yelling over the top of that. Um, and because Voivod has an awesome aggressive right. vocal and a very original vocal that really no one sounds like either. But um, but harmonically, like the chords that Voivod, I like those creepy chords. Yeah. You know, so the dissonant like flat fifths dissonant. are like really cool. Yeah, those and are they awesome. Use, I mean, the guitarists in Voivod they come up with chords that you can't even describe off the top of your head, you know? So that's yeah. kind of where we're going with that. Okay. And kind of sprawling song structures, too. I think yeah, totally. You know, uh, that's kind of where the band moved more so with the second album. We started coming up with these songs where it's like, oh, shit, we have to learn this song. Yeah. So many changes in different directions. So how do you guys describe your music to people who aren't familiar with you? I mean, anybody could look up a, a magazine review or, or something online and say, hey, this is what these guys sound like. But when you're talking to people about what kind of stuff you play, how do you describe it? So it kind of took a while to figure out, like, okay, what, you know, it always feels... You know, when you put a genre tag on it, it always feels a little disappointing. Right. Because it, you know, it feels like it minimizes something. Sure, right? yeah. But you have to have genre tags, right? Or three or four. Yeah. yeah. Just string them together. Just hyphenate. Okay. <laughs> like, just hyphens between all those. But, you know, usually, I think we tend, we've kind of settled on, like, we say, like, psychedelic hard rock with sort of progressive influence or okay. proggy psychedelic hard rock. Those, those three seem to kind of go together whenever we describe what we're doing. Sure. I think lately, though, with the new album especially, we went moved, we're like... Sh- shifting from uh hard rock to a little bit more metal because there's, yeah, there's a little heavier definitely stuff some metal in, in there so i don't know psychedelic definitely with like the vocals and stuff so like psychedelic progressive metal almost prog yeah. metal i don't know it's really hard to describe <clears throat> yeah i also hear you compared to mastodon which um i don't necessarily see that as the first band that i would throw out there mm-hmm. uh but early rush um, yeah, I could definitely. definitely see some of that influence, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, especially with some of the guitar work in there. It was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. I think with the Rush influence, you can definitely hear in the first album a lot more. And mm-hmm. then the Mastodon stuff really comes out kind of comparative to like Crack the Sky, if you've ever heard that album. Mm-hmm. Like they have It's super progressive, but it's also heavy. Right. And we have those two elements, and I think that's why the comparison's there. Sure. <laughs> and they're, uh, I'd say it's definitely like later Mastodon. Which I really had never checked out yeah, until yeah, totally. Jesse here. We're not early Mastodon where we're like <clears throat> screaming and going as hard as we can. Right. So, yeah. That's the Mastodon I had heard before. And even though I love stuff like that, I just hadn't really come around to getting into that stuff deep until just this last year. Jesse uh, sent me some links to some newer Mastodon stuff. And I got really into it because I thought, it, it's funny you didn't think so, but I thought it was kind of similar to what we were doing. But the new album was pretty much recorded at that point. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's true. We'd written all the songs before you'd really gotten on your Mastodon we're, kick. You're we mixing, so. really. Yeah. And um, it, it, and people, uh, the funny thing is people never said that um, about the first album, but people have said Mastodon. Mm-hmm. And um, I haven't prodded them to or anything. but uh, and So it's, it, there is some similarity there somehow. I don't know. Um, melodically, I suppose, mm-hmm. and that it is fairly heavy. So, Mike, how would you describe us? Uh, I would yeah. say, like, if I was going to 
hashtag define <laughs> uh, you know psychedelic prog rock is, yeah. is just the yeah. phrase that that pops into my head and uh, psychedelic I think has different connotations for different people I think generationally I mean if you're yeah. going back to 60s and 70s psychedelic you think of stuff like Pink Floyd mm-hmm. you know but then if you get into like the 80s and stuff like that then you know Voivod is definitely pretty prevalent so mm-hmm. um, but you know and then you get into stuff like prog rock and you know I start thinking of bands like Prong um, and some of the hardcore uh, crossover bands. <laughs> yeah, which... yeah, you know, with the different genres um, that we purposely include, it's funny. I think every band I've ever been in, I'm trying to sew a few genres together because right. I just can't stand to be one thing, you know, um, because I, it, a combination of things is going to be, I think, more original and appeal to, right. you know, more people. But uh, I, I hopefully we sew them together so it's not like, you know, uh, this is the Rush song, or this right. is the yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is yeah. the you know um, High on Fire song, or whatever. And hopefully, it's kind of fused, sort of. Mature, Do you find you know? now that as people have struggled to kind of define what you are, that you're trying to fit into a box with your music, or mm. uh, are are you trying to create something now in that sense, or are you just? Letting whatever happens I happen. I think one of my favorite things about being in this band is that there is a lot of room for experimentation and play and that kind of creativity. And as long as it's good, it's like, okay, let's go there and let's see what happens. Yeah. And I like that, you know, I, I, I like that this is probably the heaviest band I've ever been in. Because um, I, I, I haven't really played in a lot of, like, metal bands. Sure. Right? I, I know Jesse has, and you have too back in, back in the day. But um, I haven't really played in a lot of metal bands, so this is kind of heavier than I've gone before. And it's been really kind of fun to sort of be able to explore that. There have been some bands where if I went that direction, they right. said, no, 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 hold on, stop, stop right there, you know. Sure. That's too heavy, Jake. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're way too brutal. <laughs> what are you doing? You're just way too brutal right now. <laughs> and uh, But it's been kind of cool. And, and, you know, Peter mentioned a second ago that, that I'm the yeller in a band, uh, which is kind of funny because I've never been able to do that before and uh, have just kind of learned that I thought there's some trick Mm-hmm. And I guess you just you just like yell is what you do. Like <laughs> yeah, that's, that's stub how your fucking toe or something. Yeah, you drop an amp on it or something. Just and... think about all the bad things that have happened to you, and you just yell. So, well, let's talk about the the vocals for a little bit then. I mean, how did you fall into that style of singing? Because it's definitely very distinctive and very unique. Yeah, I mean, I think he um, has good questions. Yeah, he does. These are great questions. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you know, I even though the band's totally different vocally. On the songs that Peter sings on, I, I I do hear a lot of that kind of umber sleeping approach, just melodically. Which um, is an older band. Yeah, he was yeah. in a band called Umber Sleeping before, which is okay. very different in tone. I mean, it's very kind of synthy, experimental, weird, um, kind of synthy elements, but kind of jazzy elements too. Yeah, it's I mean, you know, I kind of uh, I'm not I'm a drummer first, and I, I've always sang just because I had to at times, but uh, it's a little more aggressive in this group, but it's you know, it's how I sing. I come from. I never wanted to sing ever. I just wanted to play my drums and jazz drums and, and whatever and and go to New York and, you know. <laughs> and so when I started doing bands around here and we couldn't find the right singer, I started maybe not being the best singer for the project, but a fitting singer. And mm. so um, w- the guys who let me feel like I could do something were, I think, Colin Blundstone from The Zombies and um, David Gilmore. Um, oh, The Zombies. Uh, I love the zombies. The mellower Jim Morrison, because he has a badass scream, which yeah. I can't do. But um, th- those kind of singers. But, uh, you know, that's just kind of what I do. Yeah, and I think vocally, too, it's, uh, you know, in this band, um, I think we're always kind of struggling figuring out where the vocals, what the vocals are doing or, or where they're going because we're so instrumental, instrumentally oriented. Yeah. Um, and I think that the vocals that we do are good, but there's definitely – a lot of heavy emphasis on instrumentation. So there'll be these sort of long passages or a song will have a few verses and then there'll be four or five minutes of sort of just interesting riffs and changes and things like that. And um, probably fairly controversial in is the sense that there are a lot of effects going on in yeah. the recordings. Yeah. Um, the effects on the vocals, what's the idea behind that? <laughs> That started with the first record. Yeah. Um, and it, this, this again, comes from kind of your approach with Umber Sleeping, right? Um, well, uh, it's, it's like um, late 60s uh, or mid-60s, really, 66, 67, 68, Pink Floyd. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, messed up in there with garage rock vocals, uh, distorted stuff. And um, 
really it's just, you know, dirty up the vocals and maybe it'll, um, I think it blends it a little more with the music uh, beneath if, if, if our vocals are a little cleaner, you know. Yeah, well, it's immediately identifiable as a signature. Mm-hmm. I mean, right off the bat, you you hear, you know, one full song and you realize this isn't a gimmick. This is part of a signature sound. Right, yeah. And uh, it's it's kind of hypnotizing in a sense that you're just like, man, as somebody who's been in music and who does, you know, recording and stuff like that, I love to try to pinpoint exactly what's going on mm-hmm. sonically. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot going on with that stuff. So yeah. are you able to pull that off in live shows? Definitely. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But I, I do think that, I mean, I think uh, that is the thing that we probably have to practice the most. Like the music, um, we get that down and that's sort of just second nature. Sure. But I, for me anyway, I know it's a lot of, oh, shit, i got to memorize these vocals. I don't remember that verse. <laughs> like, that seems to take a little bit more effort for me. Right. But once we get it down, um, there's some songs that, for me personally, like, uh, I didn't think I'd ever be able to sing and play guitar at the same time. Mm-hmm. And now it's it's like nothing. You just do it. And um, I, I think with uh, Solid State, for example, um, I'd written, so I'd written a couple verses for that one. Uh, and that's the only song in the album where I just kind of, like, scream my guts out. Um, <laughs> and... But I remember uh, we played that show uh, at eleven eleven, right? You guys remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. the one, oh, the outdoor oh, yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, the outdoor yeah, show. Yeah. And I, I don't think we'd really practice it that way. And you, and I, I just, I, I thought, well, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna try this yelly thing that I do here. And uh, the think the first time you guys heard it was when we did that live that one time. Yeah, it was awesome. We just kind of, and it kind of just stuck. did it. And, uh, <laughs> that was the first time you heard it. Surprise! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there it is. And it was yeah. like I just walked up the mic like, and screamed. Looking and at like, Jake, like, what, what is he doing? Yeah, that's, like, what that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And I think one thing to, I mean, on Peter's end too is like, you know, he's just jamming on the drums so hard and he has to sing too. Yeah, so that's a lot. Eventually of you play five songs that are all, you know, five plus minutes long and then you're yeah. winded and it's hard to sing and play at the same time. Yeah, so. no, it's definitely. For me, I know challenge. for a fact that drumming and singing, for me anyway, are uh, uh, kind of hard. Not not really the counterpoint, but um, it's just two different worlds. It's a, It's a melodic world. You know, with your chest and it, in breathing, and and then the drums are purely rhythmic, and uh, so when I get caught up in the drums, I forget the lyrics a lot. So yeah. <laughs> I have them written all over my snare and like my first tom, where I can look down if I need a cheat sheet. Yeah, <laughs> because I kind of get lost in the drum thing, and my eyes are closed a lot of the time. So, yeah, <laughs> um, the lyrics—it's a different world for me. So, yeah. no, I. I, I... Can understand that because when I was playing guitar and, and doing vocals back in the metal bands, you know, you'd get back away from the microphone, get really heavy into a passage, and you know, eyes are closed and you're just jamming, and then all of a sudden you forget, oh fuck, I'm the one that's supposed to be back <laughs> yeah. up on the yeah, microphone. Yeah. And uh, hopefully what? somebody knows your songs and maybe they <laughs> they start it back up for you. But yeah. uh, that I've next verse some... is coming up and you're stepping up to the mic and you're like, okay, what's that line? What's yeah, that yeah. line? <laughs> yeah, we've all hope that, that, that it comes to you quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've done some shows. Um, uh, on guitar in in bands and the lyrics come much more natural though yeah when you're on guitar yeah totally <laughs> kind of groove right with the with the feel a little more yeah but uh yeah so um now you you peter you record the material correct yeah so self-recorded self-produced to do the Artwork and everything, from what I understand. Yeah, well, this guy's a rock star. Yeah. yeah, what the fuck do you need these guys for? I, <laughs> I know. Yeah, because <laughs> he can't play guitar and play drums at the same time. Oh otherwise, uh, man, he's got to clone he, himself. He books yeah. shows. He does art for flyers. He yeah. does the art for the album. He records. Yeah, he yeah. we show up for practice. Yeah, yeah. You're seeming very humble about that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I just remember the first. A um, couple boxes, I think it was 84, I got. I really got into music. I was getting into bands. I was getting into Kiss and Shout the Devils Out and all yeah. this. And a lot of good albums were coming out. 84, 83, those were big years for hard rock and metal and stuff and ACDC and things like that. And my dad saw I was really getting into music, and he gave me a couple of his records, uh, a couple boxes of records. And in there was a lot of good stuff. And so I remember just l- listening to that stuff, uh, Machine Head and uh, Ma Vishnu Orchestra, Birds of Fire and... Uh, Miles Davis live in Europe and just lots of good stuff. First Sabbath, Master of Reality, um, First Van Halen, lo- and just studying those album covers and looking at all the names on the back. And I would go to record stores as soon as I got my first job, Golden Oldies, different record stores around here, and um, 
I would buy records just from like who produced the record. When this guy produced this Edgar Winter record, now I'm you know I'm going to buy it because it probably sounds awesome. So so I've always been into the whole thing and um, like who did who did the art for all the Robin Trower album covers and you know um, all that kind of stuff. I've always been into the whole package. What makes it what makes it work? You know what really makes it all come together. Mm-hmm. So was it your idea to kind of say, hey, listen, let's go ahead and self produce this entire thing and just do it all internally? Yeah, because I'd I'd always been involved with Pacific Studios downtown here in Tacoma. Okay, and I knew we could kind of go in there at night for um, a trade or or a, or a good rate and um, record some drums in there and kind of take our time a little more than if we were to, you know, have to pay somebody a thousand bucks for the day to go into a, a Seattle studio or something. Sure, it kind of rushed to get it done. So yeah, well, the production quality, especially on Phase World, is. Pretty top notch. Uh, did you mix and master that yourself too? Yeah, yeah, did all that stuff. That's this guy, <laughs> he, he really mixed and mastered. I mean, you probably spent hundreds of hours. I mean, I just spent a lot of time, a long on, time, on especially on going the back and album. forth to the studio. He'd like, always come to he us. He would go after his kids album. go to sleep, and then he would send I, us like five yeah. mixes and say, "I think I brightened these up like, a hey, bit listen, more." Listen to uh, <laughs> yeah. l- this album compared to ours. What do you think? And you like just every time I saw him. Was, oh yeah, yeah. We, uh, we we couldn't practice one night because the studio was being used. So it was before we had the practice space, and so he's like, "All right, let's go to my place." And then he's like putting in different records so he put in like Kiss and he's like alright now listen to our record does it compare you think it, it stacks <laughs> how does it up compared to the new Voivod album yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, are the, how, are the how does it sound like, compared to a $40,000 yeah, record exactly. yeah and with, honestly it's like man it's it's right up there it, it stands up with them it, yeah. I think yeah. it does I think it, it does. really does sound great yeah yeah no, I think so well thanks who needs record labels who needs engineers <laughs> oh, we yeah. need someone to put it out probably but, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, you should just start your own record label. <laughs> well, that's it's not a bad good. idea. So, actually. if well, somebody wants actually, to try out Phase World, you know, yeah, hit o- us up. You open know. invitation record labels. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> so, uh, as far as pulling off your stuff live, are there any particular songs that you guys like to play live more than others? Some some favorites you have that you think you pull off really well? Yeah, I think we have a few that are just sort of in constant rotation, and I think we're. We're sort of struggling right now because we have new songs that we're really excited to play, and so we're, we have to start figuring out which ones to bump out of the set. Okay, and so it's always really tough because it's like, shit, I really want to play this song, but there's this other new song that we really want to play. So that's where we're at right now is we're tr- we're trying to work in these new songs, but also figure out which of the old tunes that are really sort of the ones that we hit really well live um, that that we can sort of keep in the set. We kind of feel really bad taking songs out of the set yeah. to put new ones in, but once we played the new one live. Then it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> then it's yeah, like yeah. we can let let the old ones go finally. But and I think, I think it's important. To, oh, uh, just one no, thing. I, I I think it's important too to be really excited about the song. So we're writing his new tunes and we're super excited about it. And I think that that brings something extra to that song. So when you play it, you're going to bring that excitement to that sure. song. You know. Well, uh, I think the song that we play live the most at is probably on the verge of being bumped at this point is uh, Iota, yeah. and that's the second song on the album. The second one, yeah. Instrumental, it's an yeah. instrumental. All instrumental. And yeah. so that song, we actually, was like the first song we wrote right out of the first demo or the first album, if you want to call it that. And uh, that that one, like, pumps us up. Like, we all know it really tight. It yeah. gets us ready and for a set, you know, and uh, that's a song I think that really, like... I, I get excited to play it live, but uh, it's probably time. We've played it almost every show for yeah, like the last year, it so for over a year now. So it's, it's probably time. For, yeah, it won't be bumped for a little bit. Stylistically, it's really it's still where we're at, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it gives a break from the vocals, as you know. If you sure, yeah. yeah if so. you don't like the vocals, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you guys are rest. A break. You know, it, it's funny. I, I <laughs> had what I meant to say. I had written vocals for that one, and I I was trying to remember them and stuff. And I think uh, a few different people, uh, my 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 fiance being one of them, was like. Because we just sometimes we'll play a song instrumental first live, just to kind of get a feel for it, and then later on maybe add some vocals in. And uh, you know, a few people had said no, that that really works as an instrumental, and uh, so that's kind of how that ended up happening.
Yeah, I, I wish more bands would actually have just instrumental songs. Yeah. I'd be like one instrumental song on every album. I think is is super badass. Yeah. So I really like that one um, because it definitely it progresses. It starts out kind of one feeling, and then it mm. morphs into something else altogether. Yeah. It's kind of schizophrenic. Which, it is a little bit. Yeah. Which is is awesome. Yeah. That song it, yeah, was and, originally not supposed to be an instrumental either. We played it and we're like. That is an instrumental song. Yeah, like, yeah, I think it's nice to play an instrumental because really, should you really have to force feed so much information to everybody to yeah, tell them sure. exactly what the song is about all yeah. the time? I mean, it's kind of nice for them to have a break and be able to kind of conjure up some images themselves. And it's more like instrumental. <laughs> <laughs> instrumental. <laughs> you just coined a new term, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, so speaking of though, uh, song topics and content. I mean, Phase World. Almost seems like a sci-fi concept yeah. kind of an album. It's concepty. Is that, yeah. Okay. Is, was Semi that concept? Yeah. <laughs> was that by design or did that just? It wasn't at first that way. And and it's kind of interesting how. So um uh I th- I think Peter and I are the main vocal lyric writers uh, right uh, I, I'm trying to think if I don't I'm, know Jesse have you done anything yet <laughs> No I'm Are you ju- pulling your weight at all <laughs> I, I'm just starting to do backup vocals Yeah, now, yeah. So. no he's which is great I I think we're three piece let's use everything we got right. so we I hope we do more My of that on the next are record t- too much so. But um you know it's interesting cuz <laughs> I think yeah. I, I think Peter and I ha- like weirdly come from different angles but then I found out that they content wise really work together really well cuz I think uh Peter's coming more from like a comic book sort of angle like yeah we were talking about that big and colorful the... and mood and like sort of the feel and style of comic books and uh whereas um i i, t- I think i come from you know I'm, I'm an english teacher i teach literature i come from like um um i'm interested in like deep philosophical political themes and things like that okay. and at first they seem really opposite but then we started talking about like that title of phase world and the shifting of phase world and the thing that sort of emerged from that was this idea of a world in flux and things sort of falling apart, right? And that I fit had really very, well with my like, themes. Like a very futuristic dystopian yeah, very vibe dystopian, was yeah. kind of what I got out of it. Yeah, I, and I, I'm really involved, and I talk a lot in my classes about politics and what's going on. And a lot of that, like the song Solid State, is about fascism and sort of the fascism that's ri- rising around the world, kind of like it was in the 1930s, sure. right, in the lead-up to World War II. And I see that similar patterns, and it's fucking frightening. And uh, the song's really about that. And and at first, you know, you would think that these two things don't fit together, but uh, comic books really deal with these philosophical themes in different ways. But the the two different approaches really do fit together in interesting ways. Yeah, awesome. And then uh, you were asking me, Jesse, uh, before we were talking, sent me a message, hey, did you listen to the album yet? What songs did you like? And as it turned out, and just by sheer coincidence, my favorite songs on each of the two albums are the last songs. And oh, really? Simeon. Yeah. Uh, I told you to listen to that last yeah, song, man. I <laughs> it's really, a it's really, a weird one, yeah. really like that one. It's a long, epic song. Yeah. yeah. It goes in a lot of different directions. Yeah. Now that and, people uh, have been making zero. it all the way through their album, I've heard that. I've yeah. Heard that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have to get through the hour of material. Yeah. 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 They heard that a few other people Save like the best us for and last. listen to Why not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that's, I mean, obviously everybody's going to have different taste. And Time Zero, kind of same thing. It's just kind of like it. I don't know. It brought everything back home for me where, you, you know, it kind of you saw the the moods shift up and down between the songs. And mm-hmm. then you just got this pure raw energy to kind of close out the yeah. entire thing. It, it sounds just freaking awesome. It's funny you say that everybody's going to have their own taste. We've had a few reviews come out about the album. And I think every single review that we've had on the album, every single person has a different favorite song. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Cause which like, is, yeah, that's all cool, you wrote yeah. an album that... Everybody can speaks enjoy. different to different yeah, people. Exactly. It's it's kind of been a struggle figuring out what to lead with, right? Like like what what image do we want to present? Because I think there's a lot of different mood and color on the record. So like figuring out where what face do we want to put forth? Because I think that will frame how the album gets interpreted, right? Sure. So like we have like like a song that Jesse came in with uh, is, pro- is a great song, Dream Receiver. We used to play it live all the time. I don't know if we play it so much anymore. I'm oh, sorry. Did you say Dreamweaver? Dreamweaver. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah, our cover of Dreamweaver. It's on the record. Did nice. you hear it? Yeah. But uh, that's the one. But that's super catchy, poppy. And so you know, we started wondering. Okay, do we want this to be the first single? Probably not, because that's not that's not really an accurate portrayal of what we're doing. We're glad it's on the record, and it's a cool song, and it's an, an interesting color to add to the palette, right? But but we don't want that to be necessarily like the foot we lead with, you know? Right. So we kind of we're, we're doing a. Uh... Uh, Jason Frost is doing a video for us right now. He's editing it, and uh, we're pretty excited. We think it's going to be pretty cool. And so we chose the first song, um, Kaleidoscope, because it has a little bit of, I think, everything in it, and it's not too long. Yeah. It's still a four-and-a-half-minute yeah. video, but 
Um, I think that's fine, but yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be yeah. cool though. I don't know if you've seen any of the pictures on our. But it's got to be. It's, it's a bit up tempo. It's got some odd time signature in the middle. <laughs> gets heavy. Um, has a the caveman chord. It's kind of middle. in the middle, and it ends goes out with the bang kind of thing. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. It's got that cool part. Yeah. So yeah, that does kind of bring all all the different elements of the album together in that one song. Yeah. No, it's awesome. I definitely noticed the overarching theme though it just it it really stood out to me after the first time i heard the whole album phase world all the way through that was the first thing i thought i was like this is definitely concept this is definitely everything really seems to tie together that is funny well you know he writes his lyrics how he writes his right from books and i write mine from comic books yeah. I literally well, books i mean each song is based <laughs> on an idea from a particular comic so book there, i have the, i would say that not i can't say that i'm a hundred percent like i i don't have all the lyrics to all the songs memorized but just the first time that i heard them i got very like i'm a visual person so when i hear something auditory it makes a picture in my head mm -hmm. and i just i got a lot of i got a movie in my head listening yeah. to phase world yeah and yeah that was kind of a I thought that was kind of a cool thing, and I just I always wondered if that was intentional. Well, it could be or, cool, or it could be pussy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> could Depending be. on who you're talking. The whole concept to. thing when it was like towards the end of mixing the album, I think Peter had said, "This is a kind of semi concept, don't you think?" And then we kind of thought about it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a it, that idea didn't come up until after all the songs were put together. I like that. It feels a bit more authentic to me than starting with a concept yeah. and trying to make it fit. It's more like. This is something this that ended up being a concept was How in our cool heads in that these songs were close enough together where they seemed to gel in an interesting way and kind of suggest an idea it was just organic. of their own will. It's almost like the songs themselves are directing that instead of I think of us. the song order, too, on the album helps a lot. How they, they are put together, yeah. in a sense, like kind of, in my opinion, makes it, it's just, it makes it sound more concepty the way that it's put together. And, yeah. and when, we, when we started the recording, we didn't really have all of the vocals written. So we had some spots we could fill in to kind of steer it in the right direction. So. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, I think an album that, that comes together naturally like that, but fits is like Injustice for All, you know, it's not necessarily a story from start to end, but the, the topics are, you know, fit well, albums like that. Yeah. yeah, actually, that is my favorite Metallica album, and people slag me all the time for that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, people usually always say puppets or... Yeah. And I know that the whole bass mix all. thing is still... Uh, a topic of hot debate, but um, it, yeah, the the songs were they were long, they were very technical, very structured. I'd never heard guitar crunch oh, like that until that. That was the first time I. I mean, uh, I think I heard, when I first yeah, heard that, I was like great. 15, 16. Yeah, and you wouldn't have heard guitar like, crunch if there was a bunch of bass in there. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, no, I actually, like the bass, lack of bass, but that never bothered me because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it allows that guitar to really There's come so through. There's so much guitar, like what? Yeah. Sorry, bass player. <laughs> oh, I, I love that album. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't for me, say it's, it's Ride my Lightning, favorite, yeah. but for me, Ride, I think uh, Ride the Lightning is my favorite album. Puppets too. is probably my favorite. Puppets is probably mine. Yeah. And you know, those three, of course, that everybody's one of those. Are I'm a huge Cliff favorite. Burton fan, so but yeah. Ride for the Bell Tolls, Ride the Lightning. That's just that kinda, guitar tone in Ride Lightning '84. It's just that's just seriously amazing. amazing. Yeah. yeah, look at the guitar tones from '83, just months before, and I, I don't know who possibly had a guitar tone like that. I mean, it's just yeah. That was some of the best guitar uh, back in the day. I, I agree with that there. So now that now that Phase World is done, um, what's the plan? Are you guys going to be putting yourselves out there to do more shows? Is there more recording in the process? Are you already thinking next level stuff? Or? So we have three songs, but we really don't want to record just yet, right? Because we are that last album was kind of arduous. <laughs> sure, I mean it's, it's it wasn't bad, but it was definitely like. We just had to keep going back, and re we wanted it to sound good, so it was a lot of re-recording and overdubs and stuff. And we I'm just still beat from it. Yeah, yeah. 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 taking so a just, nap after this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially him, just the mixing hours and hours and hours of mixing. So trying to get out of studio mode. Yeah, we just want mode. to take a little break from that. It will be nice because a lot of these songs we were kind of learning as we were recording them, right? And so it'll be nice to go in the next time we record and have the songs down really well. Yeah, we plan to do maybe a couple of EPs. Yeah. Oh, cool. And then, yeah. you know, maybe stack those in, as an album eventually or just leave them EPs or, you know, whatever. But go in, record um, kind of with a good spontaneous energy and um, have it be maybe a little funner because it's three or four songs and yeah. you don't have to worry about ten songs. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see you guys on uh, Bridge City Sessions if you're familiar with that at all. <laughs> yeah, with Bridge yeah. City Sessions, yeah. That's a cool... They're down in Oregon, right? Uh, yes, I believe they're in Portland. 
Yeah, that'd be cool to do. Yeah, that's uh, some cool videos and some kind of cool. It reminds me of the one. Is it all jam just live video. session? You just play and he mixes it, or uh, yeah, I believe you just go down to his studio yeah. and he he videos it, and you, know, you guys just do a live jam and they they do kind of a, a cool video off that. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, we've talked about doing like a split with another band too. That'd mm-hmm. be kind of cool to do. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, so I, I meant to ask you guys this earlier, but I got distracted. Um. Three piece power trio. Oh yeah, doesn't seem to be that much of a thing anymore. <laughs> why do you guys stick with the three? And why, I mean, uh, um, what keeps you going as that? Well, we have been down for possibly a second guitar, mm-hmm. um, but we don't think anything's wrong with the lineup now. Or you know, we're not uh, we're not in a big hurry. But if the right person came along and maybe had an additional vocal to add to, we'd we'd possibly be down. I just don't hear anything missing at this yet, point. Though. Like, you know, we have a really good sound. We pull it off pretty well with a three piece. So, and it's so hard to, I mean, just in bands, it's, it's so hard to find just the right person Mm -hmm. that creates the right balance that not only you have to get along in terms of music influences and, uh, style, creative direction, but also just personally, um, you know, there's that element too. Uh, and to find somebody that really brings something to the band of value I mean, to have all those elements in place is really a rare find. Yeah. So if it happens, we'd love to add another guitar player. But we're, I think we're pretty fortunate in that we have the chemistry that we do now. We work really well together. Um, that to, to add something to that and, and change that dynamic, which is, wouldn't be a bad thing necessarily, would have to be in the right way. We wouldn't really want to change it. We'd want to maybe add to it. Sure. You know, if somebody comes along and they're really headstrong or something and can't just kind of like come in and be part of it and... Eventually, of course, we would let anybody write or, you know, have an equal say or whatever. But if, if hopefully, hopefully, they, hopefully they like what they're getting involved with to begin with, and they're happy right off the bat. And of know, course, so. we're gonna have to haze the shit out I've of them. I've been in bands. <laughs> I'm not gonna just get in. People get in the band <laughs> and want to change the whole band, and yeah. it's like, yeah, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna whip them with to towels be. with <laughs> soap in it, and yeah, it's gonna be brutal. So if they can it's get also through that, one more person to pay. So you know, yeah. it's true. <laughs> Well, yeah, you don't want to share the millions. Yeah, yeah I mean that twenty bucks at the end of the night. <laughs> hey, you don't it's want to get split me it home. four ways. It's got to buy us Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, get Taco Bell and gas. And three, three bottles of beer split yeah. four ways. That's yeah, pretty yeah. Tough. Jake, I got the Taco Bell app now for after shows, <laughs> so we can have that shit ready when we pull up. Oh man! <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so your your sound that you've created as a trio, when you play it live, do you feel that you do an accurate portrayal of what you sound like on the record when we were recording the record i think peter really insisted on let's make this as much as possible sound like what we do live right so there were a lot of times where it was like all right well i'm doing a little i'm not a big lead guy i'm very much a rhythm riff guy right there's a few leads i do on the record and it was like all right well i want to play the the rhythm part underneath that and we tried that a few times it was like no, no no let's do it like we do it live so i think you know there's always that question of how much is the recording its own thing versus how much is a reflection of the live show? And I think overall the the record, f- with a few exceptions, is really what we do live. Yeah, I'm really a fan of groups that uh, have that natural, exciting energy, like Cream or like the first Van Halen. And you mentioned U2 for some reason earlier, but stylistically it's not. Uh, but but when the guitar does something up here, yeah, it's just got bass under it and drums. Yeah. I think that's exciting because you hear the bass. You yeah. Know? Um, so I, I, w- I was leaning um, on this album towards not st- overdubbing too much. I wanted it to feel real and honest, you know. Yeah, so. I've I've often seen three pieces that add that fourth member in there, and one of two things happens: that fourth member is intelligent enough and articulate enough to figure out what to do to complement, or it actually detracts mm-hmm. from that because now you're trying to find something for that person to do. Right. And yeah. if they're not just doubling that first guitar player. Yeah. Um, but if you were to go into a writing mode with that fourth right. person, that might create an entirely different dynamic that... Which is hard to do because they're not caught up to speed yet. So right. it's like a person has to be in the band for a little bit before they sort of understand the songwriting process and the style and what we're going for. <laughs> Yeah, for personally sure. as a bass player, I like it cuz it gives me a little more freedom as far as if there's a lead part or something that the guitar is doing separate from the bass, I have a little bit of more freedom to kind of do what I want to do, but also it's a challenge because I have to make the song sound, you know, comprehensive enough to where it's, it, to it comes together. Space, yeah. yeah. Right. 
So you guys got some shows lined up here uh, anytime soon? We do. March 22nd is our next one. At oh, my Valley. gosh. At the Valley. And then March 29th, we have play the week after that up at Tim's. Is that right? No, that's a Tacoma show at oh, Tacoma the Clad Pig. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, what, we, we took two shows Jason in Tacoma Chandra and TP Creeper. a week apart um, because... The guys from both clubs didn't mind if we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do sound at one of the clubs, so I didn't mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, Flash didn't mind over at Plaid Pig, and uh, it, was a good, it was a good set of bands for us to play with. So both shows are going to be really fun. We yeah. do have a show at Tim's, though, on April 12th That's right. in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll be doing a, our first tour. Yeah, we're going down to Oregon. Two-day tour. Two-day two 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 day tour. Day. A, weekend, uh, a weekender. Yeah, <laughs> we're putting the two in tour. Yeah, uh, Bend, we're, Oregon, and Portland. And so. Portland, yeah. Awesome. Are you bringing anybody with you? You touring with anybody else, or is this just all you? Just all us. I, I yeah. yeah, we're just uh, we're, we're playing with different bands at each show. I think. Okay. We're not playing, are we playing with the Cronkman at both? Or no, no. Okay. They're, they're, we're playing with the Cronkman. They're very cool. Uh, they're a group from Bend, Oregon. So um, we play with them. We're uh, playing with them on the twenty second as well. They're coming up here to Tacoma to play. Mm-hmm. Oh cool. Yeah. And then we're going back down there in June. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, they're a great great band. Well uh what would you like the world to know about the Sky Giants? If you could tell them one thing <laughs> about you guys, what do you want people to know about Put what you do? Put our record out. Yeah. If you're Relapse label, records. Relapse, yeah. are you listening? If you're a label and <laughs> you're out there, we have a cool album out right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, uh, if we can be conceited for a minute, I think it's the full package. You know? Yeah, it's the full package, sexy bods. Yeah, yeah. bods. Seriously, All of us. yeah, we're we're the best dad rock band on <laughs> yeah. the planet. Uh, Take his word for it, because uh, I'm staring at all three of them, and I've got to have this iPad on my lap. Because barely contain it's himself. Yeah. Very <laughs> apparent that there's some movement happening. <laughs> so, uh, hey guys, plug all of your social media sites. Tell us where in the world we can find you. All right. Uh, Bandcamp. Where, Bandcamp is where you can find the album for yeah. sale there. It's the skygiants.bandcamp.com, I yeah. think. Yeah. And then you can buy it on, I think, or play it on Spotify and iTunes and all those. Oh, yeah. And then we'll have a CD out soon. I think they're being pressed right now. Oh, so yeah. those will also be on Bandcamp, so you can buy those. And, uh, you know, the usual Facebook and uh, Instagram. Okay, so and just search the Sky Giants and everybody will find you? Yeah. Yeah, the Sky I, Giants, all one word. We haven't we'll, set it up we'll yet, up. but I'm going to set up a live journal for us. Oh, yeah. cool. MySpace, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My, I can't <laughs> wait for that MySpace yeah. page. Yeah, come. yeah. That'll be awesome. <laughs> Sky Giants is on live journal, everybody. Not yet. <laughs> all just right. the usual stuff. You'll find us on there. Well, guys, this has been super awesome. I uh, appreciate you finally taking the time and sitting down with me and letting me interrupt your... Uh, rehearsal session today and uh guys keep your eyes and ears peeled for the sky giants they're doing big things their album rocks their songs are fucking awesome and the three gentlemen that i'm in the room with are stellar examples of humanity and uh, when you see them on the street go give them big hugs and kisses our dad Uh, bods will really (laughs) thank you for it (laughs) awesome so uh jake jesse peter thank you so much i look forward to talking again real soon yeah thank you mike
I can't be 